All right, what's going on, guys? So <clears throat> we are in uh, Solfos, Iceland right now. And I just wanted to just kind of come in here and make a quick video talking about where I see network engineering going in the next um, 10 years. So within network engineering, I know a lot of people think network engineering is oversaturated or not, actually not oversaturated. I'll take that back. Most people will know that it's actually undersaturated and it's kind of underrated as a tech field. But as of right now, I say the big thing in, in network engineering as we speak is the fact that like, where is it going to be in the next 10 years? So a lot of times people think, oh, it's going to get automated or, oh, AI is going to take over without having evidence to prove that or anything to, to back that up. It's just more of a baseless claim that I've seen a lot of people make. When it comes to, to network engineering, right? The whole point of what we do is you have the hardware component, right? So you have like physical hardware, like actual physical things that we touch. Router switches, firewall servers, access points, these physical cables, these SFPs, these copper cables, uh, these things that we actually have to touch, right? So that's part of what we do. But also you also have to remember we are configuring that, man maintaining that, managing that by adding configurations onto devices on a network. So the fact that we're doing that on top of the fact that we are also uh, essentially doing the, the pieces in terms of managing that, troubleshooting that, how can that be automated? So one thing that a lot of people are saying is, oh, the configuration side can be automated. For example, the CLI, right? Which to an extent definitely can. And automating a lot of that process in that in that sort of busy work can alleviate the stress for us network engineers. But you still need eyes and ears of people um, to sort of communicate with the people on site or touching the physical equipment. So that part of it, I mean, if that's going to be automated, that would take a lot of machinery, a lot of logistics, and it would probably be more expensive to, if you're going to replace physical people who are managing the physical hardware, who are racking and stacking devices. For example, as a network engineer, you have to remember we are racking and stacking devices, which is basically we're taking these physical switches, servers, plugging them in, troubleshooting them. So it would take literally robotics for, for that to be automated or have AI replace that. So that's one big part that, I, that I'm starting to see is people think, oh, it's going to be automated. It's going to be automated. It's going to be automated. The only thing that I can see potentially being automated is the redundant configurations that we're doing. For example, as a network engineer, we do a lot of configurations that are just copy and paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, with obviously some some iterations between each one. But the big thing you also have to remember is we are also in the operation side. So if the AI makes a mistake and it doesn't catch it in real time, obviously it's going to cause an outage. And in terms of a company or an organization or government, the last thing they want to do is losing access to a network or having it be a threat to a cyber attack, right? Because you also have to remember, as a network engineer, we're working with data in transit. So data in transit basically means data flowing from one direction to another. For example, I'm in some city in, in Iceland right now, right? And let's say I'm sending traffic to someone in Nigeria or someone in South Africa or someone in Los Angeles. If I'm sending data there, it's going from my physical location where I'm at right now, there's an access point right there, right? So if there's an access point right there, it's connecting from there to some fiber optical cable somewhere and that goes there, then ends up under the ocean, the sea cables to Los Angeles. So if you're if you're gonna have to remember, if AI is gonna automate that process or have you know that not have a human eye on it, you have to remember it has to be extremely accurate to the point where it's not gonna make any mistakes. And to a certain degree, obviously automating is gonna prevent those mistakes. You have to remember, it can cost the company a lot of money, and that's a lot of risk. So it would take AI to, to be extremely functional to do those configuration changes for it to for those configuration changes to be worth the risk. If it does, if that AI does mess up to the point where it can cost you know lots of money um, in terms of fixing that or troubleshooting that. Also, troubleshooting is, takes a lot of effort, and it like I said, we ha when it comes to troubleshooting, we're also troubleshooting layer one. If you're troubleshooting layer one, you need someone at the physical site someone physically to look at the cables. Uh, so that's another big issue as well. So in terms of network engineering going anywhere or is it getting automated? I highly doubt that. I, I just don't see that coming. For other fields, I don't know. I mean, no one can really predict the future. No one really knows what's going to happen, but you can't just assume, oh, it's going to get automated. It's going to get automated. It's dead. It's dead, you know, or AI is going to take over. Like I, I, need some, I need to see some more evidence for that. Um, but yeah, that's just what I wanted to say real quick. I'm out here enjoying the the Icelandic vibe out here. By the way, if you guys are still with me right now, it is currently two in the morning here in Iceland, right? And I know the sun is out as you can see, but in reality, it's actually, I mean, the sun really doesn't set here. So it's like July here right now and the sun has not set, which is kind of crazy, right? So we're just enjoying the vibes. It is absolutely insane. The fact that you have pretty much sunlight throughout the whole year. So it's pretty awesome. But, uh, but yeah, I, that's just a little bit of a side tangent that I wanted to throw in there. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. 
Really, I just want to talk about the process of AI and where do I see network engineering going in the future? Uh, I currently don't see it going anywhere in terms of really what, what are people afraid of is the, the jobs decreasing or your job being automated to the point where you get laid off. I mean, that's what people are really afraid of. I don't see that coming yet for network engineers. Um, I can't say that in the next 20, 30 years. I don't know. I, no one can predict the future, but that's just as of what I see right now. So if you guys are currently studying or currently looking to become a network engineer, keep grinding, keep hustling, but move quickly, move quicker because there's no point of waiting. Stop overthinking it. Even if, here's the thing, even if it does get automated in the next 10 years, what's what's your other option? Are you just going to like look for a, a career that doesn't get automated? And then how do you know that one doesn't get automated? So, or get, you know, have AI take over. So, I mean, it's just a lot of things that are people are talking about that I'm just like, I just don't see eye to eye with, with all those things, but I just want to have this be kind of a raw video, keep it real with you guys and, uh, just explain to you, to you what I've been seeing in the industry. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you guys are interested, I do have a mentorship program where I help students break into network engineering. Even if you have very little experience or are just, as long as you're hungry and you know, this is something you want to do then I would definitely look into doing this. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and I hope you guys all have a good rest of your day and peace.